First Peter 3, 13, very powerful scripture. <laughs> Who is he that will harm you if you are the followers of that which is good? If you are doing the will of God, how can God allow you to be under a curse for doing his will? God is not unrighteous, not the God that I serve, not the one I serve. You see, he said, you shall not be visited with evil. <laughs> Proverbs 19.23 The fear of the Lord leads to life. Then one rests content untouched by trouble. Let me give it to you from King James Version. The, the fear of the Lord tended to life. Life means enjoyment of eternal life, the blessedness, the fulfillment of the promises of God. And he that has the fear of the Lord, he shall abide satisfied, first of all, Life will be pleasant for you. Job 36, 11 has already told you. In fact, we should overcoat Job 36, 11. If you obey and serve him, pleasure and prosperity, reward. So you will abide satisfied. He shall not be visited with evil. No matter how wicked the devil is. Psalm 125, verse 3 has said to thee, For the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon you. You are the Lord of the righteous. You belong to God. God is for you. And if God be for you, if God be for you, who can be against you? Is God for you? If God be for you, who can be against you? Zalikro Namazakatishkada. <laughs> who is that person? There is nobody, no being, visible or invisible, in the entire universe that can be against you, that can curse you successfully. There is no demon that is demonic enough to try to possess you because God is for you. The question is who? Who is that person? Who is that being? That being must be greater than God. And because there is none greater than him, then you are eternally secured. Listen, to be a Son of God is not a joke. It's not a slogan. No! You are a mysterious being that is superior to all demons, superior to all angels. That's what I'm trying to say. Angels are to serve you. You belong to the creator of the universe. There is no curse that can touch you. He shall not be visited with evil. They won't even visit. <laughs> Some like said, they will not come near you. They dare not. They dare not. So solve the problem of sin. Stay in God. Be holy. Be perfect. Be righteous. That's all. That is the key. The secret of a curse-free life. That's the secret. You can't sleep at night because of witches. Ah, you don't know who you are. And that's why they are plaguing you based on that ignorance. Based on that ignorance, you are being plagued. That's why a child, and here, even though he be master of all, he is put under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. Galatians chapter 1, chapter 4 from verse 1 to 3. He is placed under tutors and governors. Those who teach him the ways of God and teach him his right, and so that you can begin to walk in it. And once you are taught, God will give you examination to prove the knowledge that you have. I've written unto you, young man, because you have overcome the wicked one. Those are trials of it. And it's an opportunity, opportunity for you to showcase your knowledge of God. Let's get this thing straight. Christianity and demonic affliction doesn't work together. Unless in certain special cases, like it was with Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter number 12, verse 7. Unless I should be exalted above measure, through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan, to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measures. These are unique cases. And when you have this kind of unique case, like it, it was the case also similar to that of Job, there will be a grace to go through it. It was similar to the case of Jesus Christ to go die. These are subjective cases of God to prove points. When you are in that kind of unique kind of scenario, the hand of God will be evident. My grace is sufficient for you. Hear what he says? For this thing 
says, I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for me, for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. I can operate in this dimension even to certain proud people. Like Apostle Paul said, let us withdraw our covering and allow the devil to punish this child so that he may nail not to blaspheme. First Timothy chapter 1 verse 20. Of whom is Emmanuel and Alexander, whom I have delivered unto Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. That's it. That's Emmanuel Zafileto. There's a case of a man who slept with his father's wife. La Zobre Nekura Dazikte. Let me give it to you from King James Version. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Lord, we praise you. King James Version, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And Apostle Paul was handling this case from the prison. And the Corinthian church were not doing things as he so desired. Verse 4. He said he has made a judgment already. Verse 3. For I really as absent in the body but present in the spirit have judged already as though I were present concerning him that has done this deed. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when ye are gathered together, and my spirit with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, to deliver such a one unto Satan, that for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. This is, this is an advanced knowledge and operations of the things of the spirit, which shows you we can use Satan to execute certain things and it will never go beyond it. So Apostle Paul requested that this young man who slept with his father's wife be handed over to the devil for punishment. And so later on, he requested that the devil's hand be stopped as an authority and they restored the young man having learned his lesson. So I needed to clarify that to you. When a spiritual covering is withdrawn from someone deliberately, it gives the devil opportunity to afflict that person. That's why it's dangerous for you not to be under authority. You have no idea how much spiritual blessing and covering you enjoy under the pastor and leadership that God places you under. Everything that is agitating your mind to want to get out of under, under, under authority is determined to destroy you. It's, it's pride. Stay where God has placed you. So there are unique cases like this. We are in, if it is the Father that is subjecting you, there is a grace that follows. My grace is sufficient for thee. For his strength is made perfect in our weaknesses. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. So he said, I besought the Lord three times. And he said to me, verse 9, Second Corinthians chapter number 12, verse 9, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. So, Apostle Paul was not under a curse. He was being groomed by the Lord. He was being shielded by the Lord, that the devil will not take advantage of him based on the mighty revelation and being the custodians of the mystery, mysteries of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. So that was supposed to be a continual reminder and you don't bring yourself under such situation. Even if you think your situation is like that, you need to hear from God say that to your face, clearly so. Thank you, Jesus. When you hear this kind of teaching, you start thinking and you start looking at all that you've been taught and how Satan has been promoted. Like I'm answering some questions on YouTube for those who are watching on YouTube, asking me why do they need to go and be breaking altars if they are already free. First of all, you need to get it straight. <laughs> you have been made to sit together with Christ. So are you sitting with Christ and demons are afflicting you while you are sitting with Christ? Your life is hid in Christ with God. How did Satan come into God to, have, to bring you out of God, enter into God and afflicted you in God, curse you in God? Let's call a spade a spade, not an agricultural instrument. Unless you break the edge, the serpent cannot bite. As long as you are in Christ. And to be in Christ means you are free completely from sin 24-7. That's all. This is the truth. Whether you accept it now or you accept it later does not change the truth. If you expect me to gather you here and say, we need to start breaking all the 24 altars of your father's house, there are those we deal with when it comes to those kind of stores. We take authority over those altars. You provoke the voices of the altar of Christ. When you become born again, you have been uprooted from any covenant 
altars anywhere in the world. You are no longer connected to any evil altar. If you understood what I'm saying, say amen. You know, these are things we need to continually remind you to reprogram your mind. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, completely new. Do you understand what I'm talking about, child of God? The gospel that tells you that when you become born again, you still need to be subject to the devil, it is a lie. Submit yourself therefore to God. James 4, 7, resist that devil and he'll be laughing at you. No, he will flee. <laughs> The moment you confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior, every curse is, dies. What many of you don't understand is this. You think you are in Christ when you have stepped out of Christ. And this is the big question many of you don't want to answer. The way you are living your life, are you in Christ? And that's why I told you in the teaching, Satan will always remind you where you are per time. By the affliction, by the evil, by all kinds of things that it does against you. And many times he makes sure he hides it until he can strike you once and then there will be no defense for you. Stop deceiving yourself. Know ye not your own self, except he be reprobate how Christ dwelleth in you. It is if you abide in me, John 15, and my word abide in you. That is when you are qualified to ask anything and it shall be delivered unto you. Let us get this one straight. It's either you are in Christ or you are not in Christ or you are playing Christ. You can't be in Christ and there will be curses hanging upon your head. You can't be in Christ and you will be in crises that are not trials of your faith. Trials of faith is different from being under a curse and I've explained it in the teaching. Check the catalog. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When your faith is being tried, it simply means your faith is being tried. Not that uh, the devil is cursing you, if, uh, witches and wizards are dealing with you. And I uh, mean, what kind of a Christian are those ones? Well, anyway, they are Christians, but we are dealing with sons and daughters of God. Christianity is a religion. Sonship is relationship. Christianity is a religion. Sonship is relationship. You can remain a Christian and be living your reckless life. So they one leg in Christ, one leg in the other side. You can lie in the morning, confess your sin in the night. You can continue all those ones. It will show in the way affliction upon affliction are set you upon your life. You are a good, a very good specimen for the devil on the altar of affliction. That's why Jesus Christ said in Revelation, I think that should be 22. He said, if that is only, let it be only still. If that is filthy, let it remain filthy. I come quickly, my reward is with me to give unto every man according as his works shall be. Wake up, let nobody deceive you. Christianity is total freedom from sin. As long as you are free from sin and you are walking in knowledge of the truth, the reason why God gives you pastors to teach you, to feed you with knowledge and understanding, you will know the truth and you will walk in deliverance and inheritance you have in Christ Jesus. Period. Stay away from sin, seek knowledge. You will walk in dominion. Period. Period. That's why you see, as much as possible, every day I want to teach you. And I keep shouting on you. You are a holy nation, a royal priesthood. You don't. <laughs> it is an abomination to find a king lying. Stay away from sin. Deliberate. Run. Flee. Then you'll be free from all curses. Stay away from ignorance. You'll be free from all curses. Period. Period. Why is Satan so powerful? Because you are a liar, you are a sinner, you are a fornicator, you are an adulterer, you are rebellious, you are disobedient to parents. That's why Satan is powerful in your life. That's all. And you don't know your right. And when you don't know your right in Christ, Satan will deal with you. Did somebody understand what I'm talking about tonight? Because your mind has been so programmed to the point that you believe in the spiritual devilish power more than the power of the Holy Ghost. And you allow them to continue to prove themselves to be powerful because of your unrighteous life. You get angry anyhow. Why won't curse be upon you? A curse, curseless, shall not alight. So every time you think or you know that you are being inflicted by curses and spell, just know there is a sin in your life, period. Just know there is a sin. If there is no sin, just know you are ignorant, but you don't need too many knowledge to know that you cannot be cursed and you cannot be possessed by demons. You don't need too many knowledge. You just need to know if any man be in Christ, he is a new creator. All things have passed away, all things have become new. You are dead with Christ and you are crucified with him. Nevertheless, you live. I'm standing firm in the liberty wherein Christ has made me free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Period. 
I am seated with Christ. We are in the heavenly places. So if you know these little ones, powerful, you don't need to know 1,000 scriptures. Just know the basic one is enough to keep you free from all evil. And if any devil comes near you, they came to try your knowledge. Show them pepe. Show them what somebody? Show them pepe. Show that devil that you know who you are and you're right in Christ. This is how to demonstrate power. Do you understand now? If you understand, say amen. Thank you, Jesus. Who is understanding the wisdom of God? Melody, do you understand now? Do you understand now, Sifiso? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, sir, I do. So if all of you now come to this reality, whatever question you have with respect to this subject, you need to start asking them. Tomorrow we will go a little bit further. And by Sunday, by God's grace, we should be able to close all the gaps with respect to curses, afflictions, evil many christians are subject to evil all over the world it's allowed it's allowed because they are christians they are religious people but they are not sons and daughters of god if you are a son <laughs> even the devil even knows he knows he knows who to go to the enemy will plague you in the capacity of your ignorance that's all please i beseech you by the mercies of god if you are going to be a son of god be one if you want to continue to play Christianity and all manner of evil are slapping you, it just it, it, it is a choice that you made. If you want to be a Christian indeed, be a pure one, be a pure Christian. No more unrighteousness in your life. If you fall into one, immediately repent, get back unto God. Receive your chastisement, whichever dimension he chooses to deal with you. Because a second out of Christ is a disaster for you. He that keepeth Israel neither sleep nor slumber. You don't get it, do you? <laughs> because the kind of teaching and the kind of pastor you want to heap up for yourself is the one that will be deceiving you. Any one of you under demonic affliction. Be here now. I can decree that it will happen tomorrow. You are back into a stronger. I just made your life miserable because seven other demons greater than the one I cast out will come upon you. Jesus Christ said, Go and see no more. What? There's greater evil come upon you. That is why many life of many Christians are the way they are. Going from conferences and pastors to bishops, they cast the devil out. The devil go get seven other demons. Your situation grow worse because the foundation of evil. It's not yet dealt with. <laughs> Impartation can get things done for you faster than revelation. But revelation keeps you permanently in deliverance and liberty. If I command demons to leave you now, they will leave you. But your life will bring them back because you are a home to them. You know this scripture, don't you? So if you are under the affliction of your father's house, bloodline, there is a way to deal with this thing. Now that you are in Christ, you need to establish for those demons that you are no longer part of that bloodline. You are not part of the bloodline of Jesus Christ. Simple. Enforce it. Because the demon will come and try whether you really even know who you are. So you show them that you know who you are. Period. But don't miss tomorrow. We will be dealing with this matter. So stop looking at the devil over everything. First of all, look at yourself. You are the biggest problem of yourself. Once you solve the problem of sin, Satan is disabled. Period. And you move to the next problem of ignorance that's why i teach you every day so that you can walk in revelation understanding he will flee from you he will flee from man of god you don't know there are wicked people i know but no evil shall come near you that's what the bible says there shall no evil happen to the just only with your eyes shall you be old and see the room. there is no devil afflicting you more than the devil you have made yourself to be to yourself you are the greatest devil of yourself by living an imperfect, unholy life. That is what makes you a devil to yourself. Once you solve the problem of impurity, once you solve the problem of lying, once you solve the problem of unrighteousness, and you advance to solve the problem of ignorance, your life is free. Your life is free. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you all.